Well, good morning. I am glad you were able to find our channel, or my channel, and uh, the video that I have, or videos, I guess it's actually plural, that I have prepared for our worship experience today, given the, um, the nature of the health concerns and the steps that are being taken to try to stem the tide of this virus. For those of you that have not uh, heard the whole story, um, health officials are recommending maintaining a bubble, uh, a social distance of at least five feet between yourself and others, that you refrain from physical contact, and that um, meetings in public, public places be restricted. In cooperation with this, our bishop has directed that all of our churches close their facilities to all meetings for the duration of the month uh, through, through the last week of March. So that is what we are doing. And in order to provide a worship opportunity, we are doing this. And we'll see if we can learn from this first experience and try to improve it next time. A uh, word about copyright, most of the liturgy that is in this video is liturgy that I have just, you know, written. Uh, it's authored by me, it's new stuff. Uh, there's a little bit that's from other sources, but that that is from another source is used with permission. Now there will be places in this liturgy to pause the video, click on a link in the show notes, play that video, and then return to this one unless I'm able to um, have the chance to thread these various videos together and create one complete video out of them. At this point they're separate videos and I'll just um, have to leave the links for you and um, if I have time then I'll come back and um, patch the quilt together so to speak. Now, unfortunately, I could not get the streaming software working as I wished, and so the sermon is also going to be a video. So, with those introductory words, our call to worship. From Psalm 95. Come, let's sing out loud to the Lord. Let's come before, the, before God with thanks. Let's shout songs of joy to the rock of our salvation. The Lord is a great God, the great King over all gods. Come, let's worship, let's be reverent before the Creator of all. Here, I'm, uh, I'm suggesting that you pause the video and check the links below. There are links to a couple of uh, videos produced by others where you can listen to Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, which would have been the choral anthem at Clarksburg. And our hymn at this point would have been, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. And there's a link for that one as well. Pause this video, and then after you've enjoyed the musical interlude, then come back and restart this one. So our opening prayer today. Lord God, great I am. You are living water. As we worship you this day, show us who we are, channels of your love, vessels of your grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the reading from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. All the people of Israel had continued on their journey as God had directed them. When they came to a place, the name of which in Hebrew means rest, they set up their camp for the night to get some rest. But there was no water. The people were angry and they argued with Moses saying he was a total failure as a leader and that at the present rate he'd get everyone killed. They really were in need of drinking water. So Moses had a heart-to-heart -heart with God informing God that he feared a lynching party might be coming next. God told Moses what he should do. He was to take his staff and collect some of the senior leaders of the people and go on a ways further. God would be waiting for them at Horeb the mountain of God. There Moses was to hit a rock with his staff, and there would come water from it, and all the people could quench their thirst. 
Moses did these things while the senior leaders watched. And afterward, Moses gave that encampment certain names so that the people would remember not to doubt God. Besides Psalm 95, looking back to remember this event, so also do two passages in the New Testament. These were not part of the lectionary for today, but I did want to mention them. In Hebrews chapter 3, it points back to this passage, preaching that we should not be stubborn, rebellious, quarrelsome, doubting God. That's Hebrews 3, 14 through 19. And then again, in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul reminds his readers that all of Israel had experienced God's gracious provision, bringing the nation out of Egypt. In speaking of this, he points to our reading from Exodus, saying, It wasn't a pick-and-choose buffet, but everyone ate the same food, the food God provided. And they all drank the same drink, the water God provided. They drank from the fountain of God, the river of life, flowing from the rock which was always with them. And Paul concludes, that rock was Christ. Our call to confession, inspired by the reading from Exodus 17 and Psalm 95. The call of scripture is clear, urging. If only you'd listen to his voice right now. Don't be stubborn. Don't have twisted hearts. Don't resist God, as our ancestors did, even though they had already seen the grace and the saving actions of God. Again, go to one of the links in the notes below. Pause this video. Play that um, music video. I suggest that you pause it between verses and spend a few moments in silent prayer between each verse. This will be a time of reflection based on the call to confession and the reading from Exodus. The epistle lesson scheduled through the lectionary for today is Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. It is by the faithfulness of God that we are reconciled, made righteous. It's by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we have peace with God. By trusting him, we gain access to a place of security by that grace, and we celebrate sharing in the glory of God. Not only this, but problems are not shameful to us. The troubles that come our way teach us to endure. Enduring through those trials builds character. And this kind of character is a solid basis for our hope. We're confident because we've experienced God's love, a love made very real for us by God's presence, by God's Spirit. Christ came at the most opportune time. We were weak. Worse, we were ungodly. The best term is sinners. And God demonstrates a love we see nowhere else in the world. God gave himself for us in love, while we were still his enemies. So, since the atonement of Christ has brought us righteousness and peace with God, we have no fear of some future wrath from God. God has proven God's love. If while we were enemies, God acted to bring us back into relationship, how much more generosity may we expect now that we are reconciled? Nothing can cause us shame for being on God's side. God has done so much for us in Christ, so now I'm proud to stand up and admit, even proclaim, that I am a Christian. The response after the video. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one through whom we now have a restored relationship with God. God shows his love for us because, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The lesson scheduled for the Who Are We series is Galatians 3, 23 through 29. Before faith, the law was our guardian and schoolmaster, and our guardian imposed harsh discipline while we waited for faith and all it would disclose. The law had complete charge over us until Christ, 
It was a kind of protective custody until Christ would come. Then, in Christ, we could have a new relationship with God by faith. Now that faith has come, we've graduated. The custodian is no longer in charge. Now we are children of God through faith, trusting in Christ Jesus. We've been united with him through baptism. In life, we're not clothed with the protective garments of the various stipulations of law. Rather, we're clothed with Christ himself. Kind of like setting aside one set of outfits and clothing ourselves with a whole new wardrobe. In Christ, we all have the same standing. Regardless of ethnicity or economic status or gender, we have the same relationship with God. We're one body, for we each have put on Christ. Belonging to Christ now, we are the children of Abraham. We're authentic descendants of Abraham, and thus the promises given to Abraham now also are ours. God intends through each one of us to bless our world. Continuing a time of prayer, we offer our joys and concerns every week. This medium is not very good for sharing these, but we still can pray for one another. And so I suggest that you pause this video for a time of silent prayer and then restart it when you're ready for the pastoral prayer. Continuing in prayer, saving God, you are the one who gives rivers of life ever flowing from your throne. And on each side, the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit in every season, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations. Knowing your design for us is wholeness, well-being, shalom. We pray to you this day, for you are our wellspring of mercy. For all those who are thirsty, whether thirsting for a life of meaning, thirsting for a word of grace, thirsting for an actual drink of cool, clean, fresh water, well, spring of mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are weary, weary from life's long journey, weary from quarreling and testing, weary from pain and grief, Wellspring of mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are broken, broken by sin and suffering, broken by hard disappointment, broken by acts of violence, wellspring of mercy, hear our prayer. For those that are presently suffering infection from this pandemic virus, for those working to find answers for us. Again, Lord, hear our prayer. Living God, through your Spirit, pour your love into our hearts, your grace into our lives, your healing into our world, until the earth is filled with your glory as the waters cover the sea. It is through Jesus Christ that we pray, the one who offered us these words to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I invite you to, again, pause this video, and, and after you've listened, come back. Our hymn would have been, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, number 500 in our hymnal. You can listen to others do it at the link indicated, and that link is in the show notes below this video.
Come back when you've listened. May we pray as we turn to the reading of the gospel. Loving God through the reading of the scriptures and by the power of your spirit. May we hear for ourselves the good news and because of your word believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Amen. And the gospel lesson for us today is from John chapter 4. It follows on the lesson from last week. So to remind you, after Jesus and the disciples had gone to Jerusalem for the Passover, they now were returning home. And this time their journey took them through Samaria. And so they came to Jacob's well. Jesus sat down there at the well and waited while his disciples went into town to try to buy some lunch for the group. It was lunchtime. And as he waited at the well, a woman came out from the town to get some water. He requested a drink. Now this caught her off guard for so many reasons. Not the least of the fact was that the Jews and Samaritans had been enemies for centuries. So a conversation began in which Jesus said he would give her living water if she asked, if she could recognize who he was and what God might give her. Living water, like a fountain, a geyser, an artesian well bubbling up from within her, a fountain that brings life and really quenches thirst. And she decided she'd like some of what he's selling. There's more to the discussion, including banter and including some deeper theological issues like what worship is and where and how it's right to worship and how when Messiah comes all these answers will be put to rest because Messiah will teach everyone. So, Jesus said, I am that one. I'm the one for whom you've been waiting. And about then, the disciples get back with the lunch they'd bought. And things were pretty awkward because they found him in conversation with this woman. The woman? Well, she left her water jar and went back into town, telling everyone she'd met someone claiming to be the Messiah. What do you think? Is it possible? So a large crowd comes out to investigate. And gesturing toward them as they come, Jesus told the disciples, there's the harvest. I'm sending you in so that you can rejoice with me in the harvest. You're the workers. Now, some of the villagers of the town had believed that Jesus was the Messiah simply because of what the woman had shared with them. Others came to believe by meeting and getting to know him themselves. And they urged him to stay a while. And so, delaying his trip back to Galilee, he stayed there two more days. This is the response. We have heard for ourselves, and we know that this one is truly the Savior of the world. This was the artwork and the quote that I had on the bulletin for this week. I hope you were able to download a copy of the bulletin from our um, Clarksburg website. Uh, if not, it is still there, and you're invited to do so. It's a PDF, so you should be able to use it no matter what, uh, what computer you're using. And my sermon today, I'm not able to get a live stream up, so I will have it as another video. And again, I will try to seam it in so that you don't have to keep on jumping in and out of this video. So the basic announcements this week, all activities at the church, both Hyattstown and Clarksburg, are suspended at least through the last week of March. We will monitor and update. So next week, look for another video or set of videos or perhaps even a live stream if I'm able to do that. And it'll be right here on this YouTube channel. Um, you can bookmark it, um, make note of the URL, whatever you'd like to do. But we'll be back here again next week. Both churches are on Facebook, and I post things throughout the week there. I have at Clarksburg 
a morning prayer, an evening prayer, something to think about at noon, usually something to kind of act as a pick-me-up during the morning hours and perhaps another one in the afternoon. So five regular posts on Clarksburg's page. The posts at Hyattstown are unscheduled. I just put them up when I get a chance. So both of those links are indicated here on the screen and you can jot them down. And um, I will also have those in the show notes below. Our annual conference does have a website and there are some resources related to the Who We Are series that are available there. I encourage you to take a look and listen to these resources. They are very well done and um, worthwhile. I hope you'll do that. <coughs> and I would just remind you our parish financial obligations do continue whether or not we're able to meet. If you are able and you could mail in your regular contribution it would be appreciated. I do recognize that um, the circumstances are difficult for many and so just putting it out there. Our worship does include committing ourselves to the work of the kingdom in all the ways that we can and so that includes our prayers, showing up, money, our service, and of course our witness. So, as God enables you, there's the need. Again, a musical interlude. I, can, I cannot incorporate these videos into this one, but I refer you to them so that you can enjoy them. This would have been the hymn had we, uh, had we met. Glorious things of thee are spoken. And there's a couple of options here for this one. And, uh, and then afterward, come back. Our closing prayer today. O oh Lord, you are our God. We are the people of your pasture, the sheep of your hand. As you've fed us by your mercy, may it be our daily bread to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our commission is done responsively. I will read the lighter print and then you read with me the darker. We too, like Christ, are fed by doing the will of God. Completing the work we've been given. We're urged to pay attention because the harvest is already ready. Christ sends us as harvesters of his grain. May many come to believe because of our words and deeds. You who are drinking from the well of Christ have been blessed. Within you is a spring now, gurgling, bubbling over, an ever-flowing stream to green our world. Amen. Now, had we met, we would have done the choral amen at Clarksburg, but the tradition at Hyattstown is the choral benediction by Don Bessig. And again, a link for that is below if you'd like to listen to it. Otherwise, go in peace, have a good day, and uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs>